You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. to Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. From the studies of traditional and alternative methods in martial arts, natural sciences, to further his knowledge of the holistic sciences, author Dr. Paul is here to help promote clarity and understanding and to help facilitate making informed decisions. You learn to trust yourself, opening you up to a new world of connection, relationships, and care. So please welcome the host of Bridges, Dr. Paul Dyer. Hey, welcome to another show of Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and you listen to the BBM Global Network. Last week, what a show. Um, I was in Atlanta. Uh, my friend um, Rob was in Dallas, and it was just such a loud show. But I'm glad I'm back in my little studio in the lighthouse, and we are here. You know, every show in Bridges, as you know, if you've been watching and listening, welcome to all the people that have been listening throughout the country and who are traveling home, people on the East Coast. I know they're getting ready for a little bit of a snowstorm, but who knows? You got people in the Midwest that's getting slammed with cold. In each show, I like to represent a bridge. And each bridge is significant about what we're doing and what we're not doing. And today's bridge is the Ambassador Bridge. It's the Canadian Bridge. Now, this bridge has got two different significance of it. One, there's a lot of workers that are working near the bridge with a duty-free shop. And women, not workers, but mostly women, are developing breast cancer. It's, it seems like an odd phenomenon that these people are working in an area that is actually making them sick. But we've, wor- we've worked in places that's made us sick, and we need to look more into that. And I know there's people out there who's trying to be an ambassador, which is funny because of the bridge, but really trying to get things focused on why these women are developing these breast cancer. And also, I like to associate with a human rights. Now, again, human rights is something that I think we ought to be – It's important. It's important to know that you have them. It's important to know that you have to fight for them. It's important to do a lot of things. And today is the right to life, right to life, right to live, where you want to live, how you want to live. And it's important that you fight for a living cause. I always say to myself that um, I teach the living scientists, whether it be in self-defense and martial arts, whether it be in the holistic practices. You know, there's things that are trying to attack you. Right. And in that attack, you have to learn how to defend yourself, whether it be a cold, whether it be a person, whether it be an emotional difficulty block. We have to learn how to defend ourselves. There's so many sicknesses out there. And trust me, if someone's trying to attack you, that is a sickness. The sickness is coming from whatever their reason is. And when we are working on our practitioner arts and we just had a really gal event in Atlantic City and there's one coming up in Atlantic City there's a we have many of these grandmasters and these teachers out here these true teachers women and men who are trying to get you to focus on synergy centering your energy to focus on defeating the enemy either within and externally and that's all that we're trying to do here. And 
if you're not taking responsibility to work on the, that action, because it's an action, this is not a false thing. I mean, we have to learn how to do this. I mean, people say it's education, it's education, or it's learning. And I've been going to these schools, and I've been teaching some of these young kids martial sciences. And the reason why I call it martial sciences is because I want them to fully understand the the whole spectrum of what martial arts really is and how it heals life, how it saves life, how it protects life in all aspects. So many kids are they're so troubled and forced, whether it be the social media, whether it be a lot of different things. And we, as teachers, as human beings, again, going back to the right to life, Life is an action. Life is more than just passing it by. I mean, no more, you know, sitting on the sidelines. So last week we were talking to Robert Cratch and and um, the football players and a lot of people that are developing these traumas from injuries from their job, their sport. The Ambassador Bridge, this bridge that women are developing these cancers from their job. What is going on when we have a hard time protecting the people that are trying to do something, whether it be work, sports, or entertainment, that is causing them to be sick? Is it our responsibility to be notified? Is it our responsibility to acknowledge? Is it our responsibility to just be informed and do nothing? I'd like to hear your comments, but you can always call in if you have any questions or comments at 877-475-8570. And you can contact me here on the show. You can call in. Remember, this is a call-in show, participation show. Now, throughout the week, I get emails and questions, and that's good because some things need to be more cleared up for your own personal use, and that happens. And you can always reach me through the show. You can always t- t- uh, find me on the show, or you can contact me through drpaulholisticscience.com. Contact me, ask the question, So, because many questions are only for you, right? Many questions you have that touches you about what we have talked about, what you can do, and what is the possibility of doing. Now, the right to a life, the right to an action, and I stress the action part. So every morning I do an action. I mean, I do my prayers, I do my meditation, and then I do my um in martial arts, we call them katas or movements. And the movements is for different parts of my body. What I mean is, is that in most people have heard of Tai Chi Chuan or Qigong or, and, and all of it, all of our practices, all the high level practices focuses on different parts of the organ. Now, I just recently gave a lecture about trauma again and about how trauma attacks the cells on the cellular memory. When you're doing an action, the right to life, which is the human rights today, when you're doing an action, there are different movements, there are different functions that we can do to harness the energy in our kidneys, our lungs, our spleen, our stomach, our heart, they all have um, relatively different breath work, different action work. And being radio, it's very tough for you to do. We've had a, a guest before when she talked about just just harnessing and clearing your mind and doing this relatively couple of minutes. Now, those practices work, but again, it takes an act of action to practice. We're about ready to take our first break, and you're listening to Dr. Paul and Bridges, and we'll be right back.
There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolly Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Hey, welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And remember, today's show is the Ambassador Bridge. And today's human rights is the right to life. And we got our first guest on, Kiwan Rattler. Man, um, pro bowler. Um, not, I mean, I met him down at the Pro Bowl um, week, and we had a good time, a good talk, and good conversation. And I wanted him to come on to the show just to talk about the man, the amazing things he's doing with these kids. Kiwan, come on into the Bridges. I appreciate you for having me. Absolutely, brother. T- tell everyone about what you, who you are, what your life is, what you've been, and then we'll get right into the real talk about these kids and and, and where you're from too. Okay, well, I'm a I'm a retired pro athlete. I played seven years in the National Football League. I, I played my first four with the Cincinnati Bengals. I played two with the Indianapolis Colts, and I played one with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I played at the University of Florida. I was drafted in the second round, and, you know, I've been blessed to, to, to experience a, a whole a whole lot of, of things outside of most kids that, from my circumstances, were able to see through the, the game was football. Absolutely. Now, you are from Youngstown also, correct? Yes, I am. Born and raised in Youngstown, Ohio. So when we talk, when we were talking about, let's get back, because most people never really talk about Youngstown and where you're from and how de- debilitated and depleted the resources are there and how it's so tough and people are just stuck in absence mode, it seems like. We want to talk about the the plight that's in Youngstown and and how you've how where you grew up and then how you got out of there because a lot of kids don't feel like they could ever get out of their own circumstances. Well well, you know, looking back on it, hindsight is, is twenty twenty. I was blessed enough that my mom was smart enough to get me out of there at an age where my mind was, you know, it was wondering to the same things that the majority of those kids in, in Youngstown are doing at that time. Early teen years, you know, you're influenced yeah. by the, the street life and, and the guys that are making the fast money, you know, and you don't see a lot of a lot of opportunity and a lot of jobs around you. So a lot of times guys are, are pushed to that, that lifestyle. And, and I can't sit up here and, and act like my life was, was all roses at that age, so I was influenced the same way those other kids were. So, my hey, mom hey, me that. too. So, <laughs> what's the, what's my that? mom put a whooping on me. Yeah, my mom put Hell a whooping yeah, on see. me. She put me straight too. <laughs> see, and so yeah, so my mom, my mom took me and my younger brother. And she moved us to Columbus, which actually saved me because that got me away. That gave me a chance to actually focus on my sport and the love that I had for it, and it took the negativity away that was surrounding me being in Youngstown. Because like you said, in, in Youngstown, you know, it, it's tough enough being an athlete and still trying to stay on the straight and narrow because they don't, you know, have any boundaries as far as, oh, you're an athlete, we're going to leave you alone. If you're an athlete, you live in that neighborhood, you're still affiliated with that neighborhood. So you can be, uh, right. you know, right. subject to a drive-by shooting just like the next guy. So, you know, it, it's – it's pretty tough in Youngstown, but I, I'm sure it's a lot of places around the world that's, that's just as bad. And and it is and it, around the world. And then I think that's why I really like to do bridges and get people to. It's like, yes, it's positive talk, but it's more about action. 
most people hear things and they think they know something. And then if you we talk about it, maybe we can clear up their understanding. And then hopefully that understanding brings them to an action. Because I don't know how anyone can do anything if they don't truly understand what's truly going on, then maybe they can act. If they don't act, that's a choice. But I think people think they know and don't really act. And, and that's that's funny that you said that because – you know, when I was playing, I would have a camp in Youngstown every year, and I would bring teammates back from Florida, teammates from the Bengals, teammates from the Steelers, teammates from the Colts, and no matter where they were from, most of them were amazed at how behind the times people in Youngstown still are. I mean, it's, it's, you, you, you can talk about it, and I can tell you about it, but like you said, until you walk in it and you see it, and you just go there and, and you experience it for yourself, you won't understand what I'm really trying to say. And, and, you know, so now let's get into you started a program and you're scouting. Tell t- you're building kids' future with the program you're doing. And then that's what really we talked about that. But I want you to mention your program. Well, the program that I, I started was a mentoring uh, program through football and, and academics is basically – like I said, I was blessed enough to get out of Youngstown, come down to Florida, be drafted, and live a lifestyle that, you know, most of those kids dream of. So now my job, I feel, is to open up as many doors and, and guide those kids along those pathways, as many of them as I can, to get them to school. And I've been blessed enough to, to, to work with 191 kids in the past seven years that have had free education through football. Ooh. And that's our goal. We, we we do tutoring. We do bus tours. We do camps. We I just try to make sure that those kids get the right exposure and get seen by the right people so that now their skills and what they do on the field can be recognized not only from their high school coaches but another resource. Like, like the basketball kids have AAU basketball. That's what we started with 707 football here in uh, Central Florida. Now, in still Central Florida, we you know we hear, like you said, there's a lot of places around the United States. Central Florida is, is similar to Youngstown. You got Louisiana, Mississippi. You got all these little small pockets in the United States here in New York, here in the Bronx, Brooklyn, all of these little places that seems like kids are still getting left, lost, or forgotten about. Why do you think that is? Because those, those areas aren't known for being rich in talent. You'll have, you know, your handful of kids throughout that area each year that are elite, but you don't have the the, the amount that you have in the state of Florida or the state of Cal- or California or Texas or even Georgia now is, is a hotbed with talent. So most coaches, I, I hate to say it, but most coaches are monkey see, monkey do. You know, the, those coaches will wow. come here. I tell my kids in Florida, you can be the fifth, sixth best player on your team and still go to school for free. But those kids in Ohio, if That's you're right. not the top kid on your team, it's it's hard to get that scholarship. Do you do you think? I mean, because we got to. I know we. I've been contacting schools. There's another friend of mine in Minnesota, North Dakota, and he teaches AAU basketball. And a lot of times, when we get into the home and talk to the, those kids, a lot of the parents still don't know how to navigate to get into the school. Is that something you also do? Because I know Bobby Morgan's doing that uh, with his program is getting that education get, and teaching some of those parents how to navigate because it's a tough road to figure out what's what and how things are going on. Oh, that's definitely a part of our program. We want to educate the parents on the recruiting process because, like you said, a lot of those parents, it's the first time that anyone in their home has been, has been recruited for the first time and most of my coaches on my staff have played major college football at least so most of us have went through this recruiting process so we trying to break it down and let them look at you know tell them the things that they need to look at because a lot of the recruiting is all flash and glamours and glitz like you know to, to catch your eyes and it's not really any substance so we try to help them see you know the things like the education pieces and the and the things that that'll help them make the right choice 
We're talking to Kiwan Ratliff, and he was a pro. He was a pro football player for many years in the NFL, and he decided to take his talents and and change kids' lives. We're listening to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. You can also catch the podcast on iHeart and iTunes Radio. We'll be right back. We already take another break, but we're going to come back with Kiwan. We'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Hey, welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and we are talking to Kiwan Radliff. And we were talking off air, and I always talk off air with my guests because we just it's so it's a blessing to have so many people doing amazing work in this world. And and each guest I have, I I hope it gives you that information, and then it gives you that understanding, and then it can put you into action. That's why I think for me. Bridges is about action. Yes, I want people to understand the science of what the human body can do and the cellular biology of how to change your life from the internal to the external. But I tell you, our stories guide us. You listen to our stories and it touches your heart, which is good because that goes into your central nervous system. And in that central nervous system allows you to function and to move those body parts into the lymphatic system, and it changes your life. It just doesn't change your life because of the words. It changes your life because human touches human, and that's what Kiwan's doing. That's what all of us is trying to do, each one teach one. And we were talking off air how a kid just lost. You want to tell a story about the the cell phone, and hopefully like parents can oh, tell yeah. these kids to, this This happens. This is real. Exactly. I mean, oh. All of our stories aren't success stories. I mean, I, I talked about how many kids we had that accepted scholarships, but we've had multiple kids who weren't able to accept their scholarships. And like the kid you just spoke on, it was Monday before signing day. Every year signing day is on the first February, the first Wednesday of February. So this kid was all set to sign to his school on Wednesday, and he decides that, oh, he wants to steal his teacher's iPhone. And you know as well as I know that iPhones, iPads, all of them are very easy to be located. So they located it. They found it in his pocket. And needless to say, he lost all his scholarships. And now he's here locally, you know, trying to make ends meet where he could have been at school with a free education and got himself a career made just by playing football. And he decided to make a bonehead error, which I'm sure he regrets. But, you know, he he, he lost – like I tell him, he lost his five hundred thousand uh, dollar bonus that he got for playing football. Now you know this kid, and 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 I, you've been t- talking to this kid. And how long have you had this kid in your program? A couple years. Yeah, he was with me from his sophomore, junior, and senior year. So three years. 
So here, here's my caveat to that. It's not something you are doing. It's not something you're not trying to do. It, it's like I love things when they work, but why are someone getting missed? Like how did he miss this step? Like you, this is not something. This is not. You know what I mean, Kiwan? This is like it, this is not. I'm exactly sure you. you <laughs> I'm sure that you had him in your office. You like, man, what are you? What tell me what you're doing? The, 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 the thing is, the thing is, is just like I brought up with myself, and just like I said with a lot of other kids that are growing up around those situations with peer pressure. Yeah. Sometimes when you get away from the things that you know, like football and practice and the mentoring and the tutoring and all the things we're doing, you still have yeah. to go back and be yourself. So when you when you when you you don't have the coach there always telling you right from wrong when you don't have the parent always there telling you right from wrong sometimes it's on that kid to really want it himself and i mean i, I hate to say it but you're not going to save every kid and some of those kids have to save themselves and unfortunately he chose the wrong path and he's one of those stories that i use now when i'm talking to my my future kids and i tell them not to make the same mistakes he did you know, we use, like I said, and that's what we were talking about here on Bridges, is that we use these stories to hopefully influence the heart so it can trigger an action. You know, and a lot of times we got to unlock that brain. And you have mentioned something before about you being from Youngstown. And I talked about this, about trauma. Trauma stays in the body. And if you don't clear that trauma, I truly believe you'll keep repeating the same mistake just on a different level or different circumstances. And I think that's the same reason why many people stay stuck in their situation, whether it be in an abuse, physical, mental, or social and economic. They stay stuck enslaved in that abusive state because of that trauma is locked in that body. And that's why I've been teaching emotional education. Uh, it, may, it makes perfect sense because I, I, I preach that to my kids all the time. As far as them on the field, it's all about muscle memory. Them off the field, it's about mental memory. And I tell them that all the time. You have to break those habits and those things that you did that were negative that you naturally do and you don't think about. And just like you have to do that same thing on the football field with your muscle memory. You yeah. have to practice perfection so that now when you're in the game, it becomes second second nature to you. And that's the same thing with their surroundings. If you don't break that cycle, that, that same pattern that you see everybody around you doing, then you're going to be stuck doing mm -hmm. the same thing that they're doing 20 years from now. And that's the thing that I try to get these kids to understand. Now, I know you need sponsors. I know you need help. So what is, where can someone say, hey, let's throw this out there. Maybe I can help you along. I know there's so many organizations and, and so many different things, but I think if you could put a face to a person, to a voice, maybe they know someone to help someone. You understand what I mean? I know that I, if anyone wants to follow, donate, help, or just even reach out and give encouraging words to some of the kids, because my social medias, my social medias are all about my kids. I'm not on social media yeah. to make new friends and you know find <laughs> long lost high school, you know, make reunions or any of that. I'm out to make sure that I pub, that I'm basically pushing, and I, I call myself the. They're Puff Daddy. I'm their hype man. So if you go to any of my social medias on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, it's all my name, Kiwan Ratliff. Uh, the Twitter is DBU1, Kiwan Ratliff DBU1, the same thing for Instagram. And on Facebook, we have a Rat Pack football page that people can go and follow and see what we do in our tournaments and see videos and, and just see some of the success stories that we have with some of our kids. All right, we, I just got another 30-second break here. We'll be right back. And before we sign off to Mr. Kiwan, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to Bridges because, like I said, I want you now to have an understanding to turn into an action. And today is the Ambassador Bridge. And today is also the right to life. If you've noticed what Kiwan was talking about is that you've got to break some of those habits that you're coming from so you can choose to live. We'll be right back to listen to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, 
you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knutson's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knutson is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Welcome back to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. We're talking to Mr. Kiwan Radliff, pro football player that turned his life not just from the game, but he put it on the field with these kids and changing lives. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming on to Bridges and being that voice and getting people to understand that we can change lives, and you're doing it with kids. So thank you so much, Kiwan. I appreciate you for having me. So we're going to let Mr. Kiwan go because we have our next guest on. And Kiwan, I'll, I'll be in touch. I'll text you tomorrow, man. All right, thanks. Anytime. So we have Miss Lisa Woods. Miss Lisa Woods, come on in to Bridges. And Miss Lisa Woods is, she's going to tell a story. And before she tells a story, I am going to try to keep my emotions, my emotions in check. Because it touches so much of where I have lived and where it brought me to this moment. Because my mother also fought this situation. So, Miss Lisa, I want you to introduce yourself and then you go ahead, girl. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to be a part of, you know, uh, of what you're doing, uh, allowing, um, you know, people across the world to have a voice uh, within our own communities. Um, my name is Lisa Woods. I am uh, a native of Texas, and um, I am a mother of seven, uh, and I have quite a few grandchildren, and just am enjoying, uh, just enjoying my life. Um, I just want to start off just with the story of how I am, where you know how I came to be where I am right now. Um, November 16th, well, November 15th, I went to a business meeting, um, in, un, unlike any other, um, came home, um, it was actually out of town, but a short trip and I got home and I was, um, I just yawned and it was so crazy how, um, my right hand just fell in this place where I instantly felt, um, a lump in my, in my right breast. And um, me, uh, I'm 56 years of age, uh, just had finished going through menopause at that age and just saying, yay, you know, I can really enjoy life and travel and do all the things I want to do. And this has really, really definitely changed my life uh, from what I thought it would be. So my journey started November 16th. I actually went to the emergency room. And from there, the doctors set appointments for me. They said, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And exactly 60 days from the date that I discovered the, the lump in my right breast, I was diagnosed with uh, stage 2B triple negative breast cancer. Now, I've never heard of this before. I, you know, I have, I have always been an advocate of breast cancer. I've walked with Susan, Susan B. Coleman. I have, you know, uh, my daughter worked six years with the American Cancer Society. And, you know, always been a big advocate, had um, friends who had breast cancer and, uh, you know, most of them survived and always in celebration mode. 
um, when the doctors began to speak to me on what I would be facing and what I, and what this actually was, I was totally floored. Um, when a doctor is telling you that, yes, you have breast cancer, but you have the, the rarest of them all, and one that has no targeted treatment, no targeted medication, um, as is with the others, that they can even say, well, this will help. Um, and so what they do is, then, then they tell you that you're faced with uh, the most aggressive, because this cancer is so aggressive, um, it can go from one day you can have a lump in your breast and the next day you can have, it could have grown, it, it could have already attached itself to your ovaries or to your bones. I mean, it moves really fast. And so the medications that actually stop those uh, cells from multiplying, we don't have that. We don't have the, we don't have medications that will do that for us. So they, they put us on the most aggressive chemotherapy um, and they even label it the red devil. And so I call it the blood of Jesus. I say anything going into my body, I pray and say, God, this is a you, you know, please bless me with your healing. And so um, it's just, um, you know, it's a different kind of uh, a take on life. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't have a strong faith and you don't really have that belief in yourself to say, hey, I'm going to survive this thing, uh, it really can take you to a different place. And so because of that, all the people that I've talked to and nobody, uh, even when I went to the emergency room, uh, the doctors that were treating me in emergency had never heard of triple negative breast cancer. And so this is, this is, the, this is the state of where we are uh, with this cancer. It, is, it, it largely um, affects African women, uh, women of African descent, that means our black female um, especially the Nigerian, that part of uh, Africa, and also, um, you know, women, secondly, women that are of Hispanic or Latino, and then thirdly, our non-Hispanic or Caucasian European women. Uh, but if a black woman is going to have cancer, then she's highly likely to have this type of cancer. Researchers don't wow. know why. They have, they've spent millions of dollars researching why it is that the black female or the African descent female is so prone to having this particular type uh, breast cancer. And so the rate itself, uh, triple negative makes, for, makes up only 15 to 20% of all breast cancers, but it accounts for overall more than 25% of deaths. And in and of itself, when you narrow it down, even statistics say that women are, are dying 42% within, within their demographic of this cancer. And so I was saying to myself and said to my, uh, you know, just going moving this over my head, no, this is not, you know, our voice has got to raise. We, we, we have to find out what's going on. Um, I took genetic testing. Uh, it came back. I don't have, uh, it showed that I tested negative to all of the, my genes were all okay. I didn't have any broken genes and BRCA2, you know, and I didn't have any of that stuff. So that meant that I didn't have, I didn't, this didn't show that it was passed down to me um, from any other generation. However, mm -hmm. sometimes women like myself just buy flu. And then those tests are not a thousand, uh, not 100% accurate. So, you know, that's why they keep them on record. There may be, it may change where they can say, hey, something changed within your, your genes, and now we can see where this happened. But uh, in testing of those 29 genes, they could not see where I was, uh, you know, where I had gotten this hereditarily. You know, Miss Lisa, I, I tell you, um, wow, you know, it's not just <laughs> so, there's so many things. My, my mother survived, my mother survived breast cancer, and she had a mastectomy. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about these percentages in the triple negative breast cancer. We're going to take another break here. And you're listening to Bridges. And I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And we're talking to Ms. Lisa Woods about triple negative breast cancer and how rare this form is and how it affects the, the African-American women more so than anything else. But it does affect us all completely. So we'll be right back after these. 
For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Welcome back to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And remember, today's show was the Ambassador Bridge. And I picked this bridge specifically because I knew about this case and also was talking to Miss Lisa, and I, and I had asked her to come on to be the voice, the voice in pink, as, she, as her, um, as her uh, moniker may put it. But these women at this bridge, in this Canadian bridge, I don't know if you ever heard of it, Lisa, that they're developing breast cancer for working in a duty-free shop. And it's just so mm-hmm. odd between 25 to 30 women all develop breast cancer while working uh, around this bridge. And they don't know why. So, and also the human rights is the right to life. And before we took a break, I was letting you know that my mother had uh, breast cancer and she had a mastectomy and fighting for cancer. And we know, remember I was talking about the sickness and trauma. We always are trying to fight a sickness, whether it be physical, internally, externally, um, from someone outside. And then you you also have to understand what's in your bloodstream and your genetic code. I have seven daughters, so I was always concerned about cancer and sickness because they do have it on both sides between cancer and MS. And then now I have a granddaughter, and then I just found out that I'm going to have another granddaughter. And Miss Lisa, wow. you're in the same situation. You have daughters and granddaughters, and, and we're talking about this rare code that we're still want to know more information about. Exactly, exactly. And there can't be too much information. You know, I've looked into a lot of the, the TNBC group, um, you know, and most of them are, um, you know, I'm, I'm not pro-black. I'm for every race of women. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just a women's advocate altogether. But, you know, we have to really, really give heed because, um, you know, some of the doc- some of the documentation that I read in some of the on some of the sites uh, are giving way to saying that uh, first of all, statistically, Black women are they they are uh, taking longer times to treat them in between diagnosis and uh, and the actual treatment itself. Also, lots of uh, our, you know, demographically, the African-American woman comes from, you know, from especially the impoverished areas. A lot of them don't have, uh, they don't have insurance and things of that nature. And then our African counterparts are, you know, a lot of them don't have access to doctors, period. So a lot of the times we're not, we're not even given subtypes. We don't even know. We, We might have triple negative, but we're not even given subtypes. Uh, of, of what this is, but because this is becoming so prevalent now, 
they are now letting us know what we have and how we have to go about treating it. You know, one of the things between um, information and, and acknowledgement and then is understanding so we can take an action. And that's why I like to do on bridges if you didn't hear. But this thing mm-hmm. that, you know, so many people who are not getting treated because they live in an economic dysfunction area, it does mm-hmm. not make sense to me. It, it's like it's just completely wrong. It's like it, they're still being economically enslaved into a situation that can be rectified just by education. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is what Voices in Pink advocate, advocate. Voices in Pink was founded, and I'm just in the, I'm just founding this. We're just turning it into, you know, getting it going, and it's just becoming so great. Uh, we want to lift a million plus voices so that there can be enough voice around the nation so people can understand that this, this, this uh, subtype cancer exists. Number two, we want to get, we, we have to get the information out there in order for women who find that they may find them, you know, find themselves in this uh, situation that they have an organization they can go to that we can then help them go through the, uh, you know, the channels they need to go to in, uh, through in order to get treatment that is in keeping with the severity of this disease. Um, let me ask you, let me tell you, I Ms. Was, Lisa, before, mm-hmm. I, I wanted, how are you handling it? You know, I, I know what you are working on and how you're doing and what you're, what you're advocating for, but you, mm-hmm. y- your strength has got, you, how are you? How are you? You know, I, I have to tell you, I, I don't consider this as being a death sentence for me. Um, okay. when the, the minute the doctor told me that it wasn't passed down through to, to me hereditarily, I knew that then that must mean that I must be a voice. So I'm gotcha. always so focused on research and, 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 and get, making sure I'm healthy and doing all the right things on my part. Uh, in my mind, I'm already a survivor. So it's important for me then to help women to understand this is not a death sentence. So I can't be a woe is me person. I I consider myself as being a very strong individual in all circumstances. Uh, I can't deny that uh, maybe on a Sunday morning when I'm listening to gospel, I may shed a tear just because (laughs) I'm just so grateful. But you know, or in the midnight hour, you know, when I'm sitting alone, I may shed a tear and say. God, are you sure this was meant for me? You know, but however, I, I just, I thank God in all circumstances. And that's, that's where my help comes from. And that's where I find my strength. And so um, in order for me to be a voice, I have to be a strength to others. I cannot yeah. let weakness overwhelm me. And, and you know, you, I just, I'm glad you're on. I'm glad you're the voice. But more importantly, I'm going to let you know you're not alone. And I said Thank that you. to you before. I said, you, you know, you're just not long. I know Miss Ashley um, is on the line, and and she's my little boots on the ground. Miss Ashley, you want to talk to Miss Lisa? Oh, my beautiful Miss Lisa, that's my queen. She already knows that I'm a true supporter of her. Um, this is taking taking me in another way that I couldn't even imagine because we're so close, and she has such an amazing yes. spirit and. Like I told her, baby, I'm just the U Magazine. We're the number one that's the most supportive that's going to get this out there and get the people, get the support and get them voices and things for her. And uh, she doesn't deserve it. You know, no, 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 no woman deserves cancer. And for the community to not even, for the, for the, for the world to not even, like you said, the people that don't get treatment because they don't have insurance, that's crap. So you're just going to let them go. not yeah. do anything. That's what, we, that's what we have to stop. We have to stop that. You know, and oh, I'm, yeah. and, and so as many people, so I know we got another segment, but Miss Lisa, if people want to support you and, 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 and chime in on Voices in Pink, where what, what do they do? Absolutely. Well, they go to, they can go to my, I have a Voices in Pink hyphen surviving triple negative breast cancer on Facebook. They're welcome to go there. My uh, website is actually um, in, it, it, it's being done right now. And so if they just, you know, stay in tune with my page, um, uh, you know, they can find out all the upcoming dates of when everything is um, going to go live and, and all that stuff. And then they can also reach me through my website, I mean, through my uh, email at Lisa W, 
um, at voicesinpink.com. Um, and the website, when it is uh, ready, will be voicesinpink.com. So. We're going to take another break here. I got my engineer. He's keeping us right on track and cracking that whip. And you're listening to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. Remember, it's the Ambassador Bridge, and today is the right to life. Remember, you can always catch us on the podcast on Wednesday on iHeart's and iTunes Radio. We'll be right back after these matches. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Email Pamela at Pam, R-E-G-O-1, at Verizon.net. She's also on the web at PamReeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. We're talking to Ms. Lisa Woods, and we were talking about the triple negative breast cancer, this rare form of breast cancer that is affecting mostly African-American women, but it affects all women. And I want to tell Ms. Lisa, thank you for coming on to Bridges to be this voice. And before we sign thank her you. off, I just want her to give her last piece before we let her go. Go ahead, Ms. Lisa. Yes, please get out there and do genetics testing, you know, do the things you got to do, research triple negative breast cancer, um, you know, and, you know, take care of your family, take care of your body. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Well, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Miss a- Ashley, now you just recently lost a family member to cancer. I did. I did. My great mother, grandmother Bob, she was a very big advocate for the community um, all over Texas. Period. She's the one that took care of the, you know, the white people, kids, and did all that. She worked at so many different families that, you know, traveling to different places when people need to get their older ones sick. She was a caretaker for a lot of people, and she was she was, was um, didn't even know she got. They one one um day she went to the um doctor. They said she had uterus cancer. They told us she had two months to live, and that two months turned into two weeks. Two weeks, and then they said it spread it to her lungs, and she's gone now. She was ninety one years old. She would have been ninety two March the thirty first. So yes, the cancer is not some something that is is. We, I'm a de- definitely an advocate for cancer. Now I have my one of my closest people, Miss Lisa Woods, that has it. So it's, it's a lot going on. You know, um, we have to fight. We have to, you know, get out there, slave mentality. Oh, no, I don't need to go to the doctor because they're afraid. No, you have to get tested. You have to get tested. You have to go and get tested, get your kids tested at whatever age to me. You know, we got we can't we gotta stop saying that oh men just go gonna turn forty to go get their prostate done. All oh, women you gotta wait till you're thirty five to get your breast um um mammogram. You know, no. Do it as soon as you can. 
You know, we have to get more seminars, more people talking about it so people can be aware of it because, you know, when it's, too, you know, sometimes it'd be too late. And then, like the triple negative cancer, they don't even know what causes it. So we need some more research on let's see what's going on. Right. Don't just say, oh, we don't have a cure. Well, let's see what's going on. You know, let's find the find the people that want to know. And Dr. Paul, it's a lot going on. It, it's it's so it's a lot. It's going back to um the first guy that was talking about the children. My my brother just got jumped by some kids at his school, and I'm headed to the superintendent right now of all the ISD to take them down because my son is bullied, as you know, and they're not doing anything about it. So yeah. I'm taking, you don't, I'm taking it, down it, the it, district. And, it, and it's tough because even like a parent like you and there's other parents that, out there who are advocates, who are strong advocates, who are saying we can do something, we can change something, and yet things are mm-hmm. still either slow in process or slow to progress. So it, right. where where can we speed this up? Is there a faster action to doing an action instead of waiting so long for someone to either commit the suicide, someone to get killed, right. or someone to die because they have not done the testing? You know, you know, Miss okay. Ashley, I've always talked about the living science, the living work. We have to put forth an action to be part of life. And this is why the human rights is the right to life. But you got to act upon it. We can't just let it slip mm-hmm. on by and, 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 and sit aside. Right. Exactly. exactly. Miss Ashley, you, um, you want to sign mm-hmm. us off real quick before we have to say goodbye? Oh, sure. No problem. Um, like I said, guys, if you support us, um, you know, you can log on to www.zbmagazine.com or get with Dr. Paul. He's one of our writers, and he's one of our main people to get in contact with if y'all want to, you know, show some support by donating because that's what we need. We need some funding to get this, these programs and power lead out to help these children and, and voices in pink as well, to help the causes all around. So do something. Get up and help. Thank you. Thank you to all our guests. Thank you to Kiwan Ratcliffe, and thank you to Ms. Lisa Woods, and thank you to our constant supporter, Ms. Ashley Johnson. You listen to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and I'll see you next Monday at 8 p.m. This has been Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. Explore new ways to care for yourself and others in order to create a healthier and more vibrant community and world here on Bridges with Dr. Paul. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.